Hello folks and welcome back to the program. Today, as you can imagine, we're taking a look at the Beatles first 1970s outputs. Today we're going to attempt to create some kind of masterful album, some kind of uh, concoction out of all these albums, uh, and kind of pretend that the Beatles never broke up. Uh, we're going to do that in today's episode. I've conjured up a track listing that kind of melds all of these albums together. Uh, and we're going to pretend that the Beatles never broke up in 1970. But before we get into the program, I just want to encourage you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video. And this video, as well as every other video, is brought to you by Manza Illustrations. That is my personal business with my wife. Uh, we create artwork for you, the client. Birthday commissions, gifts for people, artwork of any kind, logo design, etc. I can do it all for you. Reach out to Manza Illustrations today. I want to thank you for watching these episodes. Let's get into it. I'm excited about this, as anyone else who's a huge fan of the Beatles would be, uh, to kind of put a track listing together of what could be, could have been, could have happened. My original idea for this was to maybe pit them up against each other and uh, imagine that the singles didn't exist. Uh, but some of these albums don't even have a number one single, uh, never even charted that high. In the kind of wide shot of it all, these albums didn't really pan out in the, in, the, in the public eye all too well. And when making this list, I even realized that none of these songs are really hitting me in the, in the, in the hard-hitting, up-tempo kind of Beatles feel. A, a lot of them, don't get me wrong, a lot of them have that Beatles stamp all over them. I always thought that the Beatles, once they broke up, had that same sound baked into their DNA musically. And you heard it. You heard it. You heard it in John's songs. Whether it be the chords that he chose or the melodic choices he made, and especially McCartney and Harrison, you heard all of that Beatle influence kind of baked into their music, and it stayed all throughout their solo careers. With that said, Ringo wanting to be a part, the least affected Beatle, and just wanted to uh, cleanse his palate with a, with a covers album, just to, to cleanse his palate, to get the whole bad taste out of his mouth. I'm just gonna do some old standards, uh, like I, uh, like he loves to do. He's He loves that kind of feel. And those tracks go into this album I've made. What the title of this album would be is beyond me. You guys come up with a good title based on these tracks. I want to hear your best title. That'll be the goal here. Give me the best title for this Beatles album and I will uh, shout it out in the next video as to what this Beatles album that never happened in 1970 would have been called. Uh, let's get into the track listing. After Let It Be, after Abbey Road, here it is. Come up with the album name based on these tracks. We start out with an upbeat, rollicking hit in What Is Life from George Harrison. Uh, imagine with all these tracks, the Beatles um, kind of injecting their own uh, harmony and own kind of brand into this. Uh, like Paul would interject in here, John would harmonize. For me, it's already halfway there in the chord progressions and melodies. Are, they're very similar to what the Beatles were doing. You lower your tone arm and you hear And you're like, yeah, this new Beatles album is great. Imagine. So, okay, we get What Is Life. Love that song. I tried to mirror it with opening up with Come Together on Abbey Road, a hit. So open it up with something upbeat, clearly a hit. We roll into Every Night. From Paul McCartney. Every night I lean on lampposts, wasting my time. I love that song. I think that's a great number two to kind of set the mood for what this album is going to be. Kind of a downplayed, uh, low key, kind of not lo fi, but not too much production attached to some of this stuff. Although there will be violins from George Martin. Uh, Etc. And, and production elements from George Martin, as always, there had always been in Beatles albums. This is not going to be as stripped down as Let It Be. Try to imagine it's not Phil Spector and it's just 
George Martin doing it. Can you imagine it? I can imagine it. So just try to keep that in mind. So we've got every night a little stripped down track, a little Paul McCartney action going on in there. I love Paul McCartney. Just the, the right amount of what they normally would do when it comes to That's a John song mixed with a Paul song, mixed with a George song, and then following up with a Ringo tune. You know, something along those lines, a formula that they would kind of, uh, kind of stick to. I've kept it pretty equally balanced, if I do say so. So ev after every night, that fades out, as it does, and we get into Sentimental Journey. So we come on to a Ringo track with Sentimental Journey thrown in there to kind of lighten the mood, kind of make it a little more poppy, a little more uh, beatly. Um, and we hear a Ringo tune. We're happy to hear Ringo, right? So he continues on singing Sentimental Journey. It's a good tune. Good track to keep in here. We get a little deeper. John comes in with Look At Me, uh, a track that's very reminiscent of Julia. A very beatly, a very, uh, that, that same kind of picking that Julia has, that finger picking style, and the lyrics really deep and, and profound. These tracks are kind of uh, like dour, kind of down. It makes me not really feel too sunshiny and poppy like the Beatles always had. Uh, but that's just a, a clarification that the Beatles could be breaking up in this after this album. You know, it's kind of a farewell, a goodbye album. You know, maybe they break up right after this album. But this was kind of my idea of their last kind of output together uh, to kind of bring all these tracks together. See how it hits with you guys. So after Look At Me, we've got great, great track from John. Again, low key, not fast paced, not upbeat. Look At Me goes into Junk, following up with that kind of middle of the album, kind of middle of the first side. Junk is a song that meant so much to me in my later youth with my wife. Uh, I love that tune. She loves that tune as well. Just kind of stuff that we hold on to that kind of meant something physically to us, that are physical items that kind of mean something a little more spiritually to us. You see something in a junk shop and it's and it's just, you think of the items themselves and how do they feel being sold like that? Bye bye, says the sign in the shop window, but why, says the junk in the yard, you know? Uh, it's very symbolic in that way, kind of like schmaltzy in a way to think of your junk being like, why are you selling me? That's how I see it. I've always seen it like that. I'm not junk. Why are you selling me? You know, candlesticks, building bricks, bicycles for two. I love that song. Maybe John would, would kind of maybe John would maybe harmonize with Paul in some parts on this song or something, but it, it, it for the most part would be as it is on the McCartney record in 1970. Uh, pretty much the, the not really embellished. Maybe it'll mix sing-along junk with junk. A little more production from the, the guys. Yeah, couldn't hurt. After junk, flip that album over. It's side tune out and we open up with Wah Wah. A track that again, just like What Is Life, gets me right in again. Uh, we hear that Wah Wah, that big sound. And you can imagine, wow, the Beatles are really, really hitting hard here with this Wah Wah track. I love this track. Uh, it's, it's great. Got great, that, that great slide guitar. Very reminiscent of, you know, Abbey Road and stuff like that. Octopus's Garden kind of guitar on here. And it's, it's something that hits heavy and makes you flip side two over in hopes to, wow, maybe this will be a brighter side to the album. Uh, after Wawa, 1977 rolls around and McCartney tries to put out a live version of this song, Maybe I'm Amazed. And it's a strong track in the album version, I think, alone with McCartney playing all those instruments. But in this case, the Beatles would be playing a lot of the instruments. The drums played by Ringo, the guitar and rhythm uh, by John and George with a, maybe it's that solo in there that McCartney puts in is, is a George solo and maybe I'm amazed on this. That, that's a hit kind of tune after Wah Wah. Love that track. What's next? Isolation from John. Isolation features that double vocal, that, that uh, double track vocal. Isolation, I feel, has that deep side that we were kind of missing in this, that introspective kind of writing. We were missing it, so I put Isolation on here. Really good track, very beatly, 
great, great lyrics from John. And, and it has that Beatle kind of tone to his voice. It's, it's always going to have that Beatles uh, connotation to his singing. And I think it's a good addition. Isolation is good to have in there. And then follow it up with another John tune. Maybe Paul could, uh, could come in here on a song called Love. Maybe Paul could switch off on verses, something. But I love that song. At one point, I played that over and over for my wife. Uh, Love is a great song. Uh, you know, a highly, uh, if it were on a Beatle album, it would have been a hit. Uh, it would have been just another, uh, you know, sentimental Julia type of hit. Something like Because from Abbey Road, this, this is reminiscent of arpeggiated kind of sound to it with that slowness and that deep kind of simple lyrics that kind of pack a punch uh, from John. And, and what else could we ask for? That's great. I think Love should have been on this album. Next up to bring that kind of quirky beatle feel, we've got Man We Was Lonely. Man We Was Lonely is not only a very quirky Beatles track that totally could have been on the White Album, something like that, that features that Man We Was Lonely. Paul doing a funny voice. We need that on this album because what is a Beatle album without that kind of quirky, fun, frivolity? Uh, not thinking too much about being pretentious, but being catchy in its own way. An earworm and a half, this song is, and it should be on this album. I love this song. I, I love the bridge, too. Hey, maybe even Linda could sing on the bridge, just like she does uh, with John. Maybe John and Linda sing the bridge parts. I like that. Maybe. Just could see it being a Beatles song, no doubt. Next up, we have Isn't It a Pity? Uh, we kind of bring this down a little bit, but catchy. It's a catchy tune. Isn't it a pity? Uh, slower. This album, full of slow songs, kind of telling the fan audience, the fan base, the Beatles are slowing down. You know, get ready. They're putting out slow, slow songs. Isn't it a pity? Comes in. Heavy, heavy hitter. I love that tune. And the second to last track on side two is All Things Must Pass. All Things Must Pass. Even the Beatles. Get ready. We're going to break up. Here we go. All Things Must Pass. Got that great guitar in there. It's a great ballad uh, to kind of crescendo the album in a way. It, it almost ends the album for me uh, with the additional bonus of the very last song being Bye Bye Blackbird from Ringo Starr. Uh, Sentimental Journey, the album, was a flop for the most part, but the song Bye Bye Blackbird would fit on this album quite well, in my opinion, because, because of the Blackbird reference. It's kind of self-referential in that way, uh, where they mention Blackbird. Uh, it's kind of like the Beatles used to do in their, like, 60s era. They'd, they'd mention previous tracks from, like, the early 60s in their new stuff. You know, the ways that they would do it. Uh, she loves you, yeah, yeah, and all you need is love. After the album's prolific end with All Things Must Pass, we get a little bit of a uh, Bye Bye Blackbird. Um, kind of reminiscent of kind of the formula of Good Night. Good Night from... Uh, the White Album, Ringo singing to end the album. Uh, now it's time to say good night, good night, good night. Uh, that album, uh, great, people love. Do you think people would love this album if it had came out? This would be the melding, I think. Uh, a similar lineup, but this would be the melding of tracks that would make it onto this album. I chose to keep out Teddy Boy as we all know the Beatles hated working on that track. Don't think it would have made it on the album. I think it would have later been held for a McCartney uh, solo release down the road as it you know did in real life. Um, so I love that track personally, but I don't think the Beatles would have uh, okayed that being on the album. And I chose to keep other tracks off of this like Mother and Working Class Hero. But to me, I thought those tracks were very John. Should be reserved, those tracks should be reserved for a singular John album as they did in real life. Either the chord progression, the melody, uh, the production elements, and kind of imagine what the guys would have sounded like making this music uh, for the fans. Kind of telling them uh, all things must pass away. Uh, the Beatles are coming to an end. What would the title be? I want to know what you think the title would be. Uh, I can't think of one. 
I could think of a track listing, I can't think of a title. All of these have such different names, I can't even meld them all together to think of one uh, that it would have been. And McCartney, I must say, a little, a little aside, McCartney was smart. When you name your first solo album McCartney and you, you Google it to this day, trying to find like top chart hits on that album, all that comes up. Is, is his career and his, his songs that, that just him, himself, comes up. Not the album, it's not, it's like timeless in that way. You don't, you don't, you're not confined to that because it's his last name. It, you know, in the future, people look it up and you're just gonna find more Paul McCartney. Not that McCartney solo seven, 1970 album. It was kind of hard to research stuff for that um, because there isn't a, a number one single and it didn't go over well. Uh, and it was made in secret. What do you think this mashing of Beatles albums, uh, their, their first ever solo albums, mashing them together, how do you think that, that went, went off? What, what would you have changed? What tracks would you have added? What, what would you have taken away from this? Just to sum up the album, we have What Is Life, Every Night, Sentimental Journey, Look At Me, Junk, Flip the Album Over, Wah Wah, Maybe I'm Amazed, Isolation, Love, man, we was lonely. Isn't it a pity? All things must pass. And bye bye, Blackbird, to round it out. What do you guys think of the track listing? I would love to know. Leave a comment in below what the title would be and what you would change to the track listing. And with that said, you could find me lounging to any one of these melodies. Take care, folks, and bye bye. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.